LoadRunner is a performance testing tool which was pioneered by Mercury in 1999. LoadRunner was later acquired by HP in 2009. In a recent assessment, LoadRunner has about an 85% market share in performance testing industry. The topics covered in this tutorial are Why choose LoadRunner? LoadRunner architecture Load testing process so let's look into the details. Why choose LoadRunner? LoadRunner supports various development tools, technologies, and communication protocols. In fact, this is the only tool in the market which supports such a large number of protocols to conduct performance testing. Broadly, LoadRunner supports RIA, Rich Internet Applications, Web 2.0, HTTP slash HTML, Ajax, Flex, and Silverlight, etc. Mobile, SAP, Oracle, MS SQL Server, Citrix, RTE, Mail, and above all, Windows Socket. There is no competitor tool in the market which could offer such a wide variety of protocols vested in a single tool. What is more convincing to pick LoadRunner for performance testing is the credibility of this tool. LoadRunner has a long-established reputation, as often you will find clients cross-verifying your performance benchmarks using LoadRunner. You'll find relief if you're already using LoadRunner for your performance testing needs. LoadRunner is tightly integrated with other HP tools like Unified Functional Test, QTP, and ALM, Application Lifecycle Management, which empowers you to perform your end-to-end -end testing process. What is LoadRunner architecture? Frankly speaking, the architecture of LoadRunner is complex, but we will understand its architecture solving a set of problems. Problem 1. Suppose you were assigned to check performance of Amazon.com for 5,000 users a very small traffic for such a huge website. How is it possible to arrange 5,000 people to access different sections on Amazon all at the same time? Well, it is practically very difficult to organize 5,000 human users, physically operating 5,000 different computers to access Amazon.com all at the same time. Consider what will happen when we test with 100,000 users a more realistic number for a site like Amazon. Just imagine the manpower and equipment costs. The solution is to use software to simulate real users who can access the website and perform operations. These users are called virtual users or V users. This is achieved using the agents machine or load generators or injectors component of LoadRunner. Virtual users emulate real user behavior. They help overcome resource limitation by replacing testers with virtual users. Problem 2. In a real-life situation, all 5,000 users for Amazon will not be at the home page, but in different sections of the website. To make load testing effective, our tests should be as close as possible to real-life load situations. How can we make V users access different business processes? The solution is VUGen. VUGen, or Virtual User Generator, is an IDE, Integrated Development Environment, or a rich coding editor. VUGen is used to replicate system under load, SUL, behavior. VUGen provides a recording feature which records actions performed on the system under load in form of a coded script, also called VUser script. So considering the Amazon example, VUGen script recorded the following business processes. 1. Surfing the products page of Amazon.com 2. Checkout 3. Payment processing and 4. Checking my account page these recorded business processes can be later replayed by the V-users. 
Problem number three. The load generator will simulate users, but how do we control which users will access what section of the website? Enter the controller. The controller is the primary component of Load Runner, which controls the load simulation by managing how many V users to simulate against each business process or V user group. Behavior of V users ramp up, ramp down, simultaneous or concurrent nature, etc. The nature of the load scenario, for example, real life or goal oriented or verifying SLA. Which injectors to use? How many V users against each injector? IP spoofing. Error reporting. Transaction reporting, etc. Taking from our Amazon analogy, an example controller will add following controls to the script. 1. 3,500 users are surfing the products page of Amazon.com. 750 users are in checkout. 500 users are performing payment processing. And 250 users are checking their My Account page only after 500 users have done payment. Note, a controller can itself simulate thousands of V-users, but V-users consume hardware resources like processor and memory. Plus, the controller needs resources to govern itself. Using controller to monitor the test and generate V-users as well may not give precise results. Hence, using load generators is recommended. Load generators are nothing but high-config machines. The number and configuration of these load generators depends on the number of V-users and the protocol being tested. For example, if one load generator can simulate 1,000 V-users, we will need five machines. Once load scenarios have been executed, the role of analysis component comes in. During the execution, controller creates a dump of results. All the errors and exceptions are logged in a database. The analysis component reads the database file to perform various types of analysis and generates graphs. These graphs show various trends to understand the reasoning behind errors and failure under load, thus helping figuring whether optimization is required in system under load. That's all to this tutorial. See you in the next one.